cannot possibly understand life and culture in the Zanzibar archipelago by staying on land alone. So I've jumped onto this fishing vessel to get another perspective. In Swahili, they call this a mashur, and it's been a vital tool in an essential trade in this part of the world for centuries. Juma Khatibu comes from a long line of fishermen and interestingly enough, he's also from the same town as Zanzibar's so-called oldest woman. Have you heard her sing? Are you a fan of hers? Yeah. <coughs> yeah, she's good. She's very smiling. I know her. Sure, she's very beautiful and she knows how to sing. Why is she so popular even in her old age? Yeah, of course, she knows how to sing and also she's oldest. She has a very strong message in her music house. She knows how to sing. She knows how to sing. She's very good. That's why you can see so most of people who sing dance, but they like to uh, listen music. Yeah, from the big kid. She's now, very good. For you, uh, as a fisherman here, mm. how is life these days? Uh, life, sure, life is a little bit, but uh, yeah, it's okay. Sometimes, yes, you know, the fish like game. Sometimes, yes, sometimes, no. Yeah. But uh, we really we enjoy it, to be in the sea, enjoy with the people. Juma also tells me that because of his lack of education, he has to rely on his fishing skills. He also says because there are so many tourists here, he can make uh, additional right. income by taking them out on his boat, showing them the different sites of the archipelago, and of course, talk fishing. So you know these waters, yes, like the back of your hand? Yes. What kind of fish, what kind of wildlife is beneath us now? Okay, okay, that's good. So we have a lot of kind of fish here. So, but uh, the very famous fish here, like uh, we have the white snapper. White snapper. It's lady snapper, bonito, the kingfish, barracuda, and uh, other kind of fish, like a sardine, the most one which I uh, can find in town there. Even the fish market, if you get a time to visit there, you can see them a lot here. Now behind you I can see a pretty ominous dark cloud. I'm not sure if the rain is going to move in. But how dangerous uh, does it get on these waters, either from what's above or below the surface? <laughs> so here Zanzibar is very like many. So that's why I told you before, Zanzibar, we have the shark. So yes, we have the shark, but it's no danger on like, a, like a other countries, there, like South Africa and wherever. So, so here, you've got sharks, but they're not the great white shark you'll find yes, near South yes, Africa. Yes. We have the small one. Small shark. Small shark, uh, especially here down there for the soap. Sometimes people catch it. Uh, that's why I told you even the uh, fish market there. There's a lot. All the tourists coming down there, but they used to go to see the shark there. But uh, sure, we don't have bigger one. We have the small one. Now, since you're from here and you know this area so well, as you look at that cloud behind you, mm -hmm. what do you think is about to happen next? Uh, so this is a normal. It's normal for our Zanzibar. So Zanzibar is a tropical country. Sometimes yeah. you can see the cloud top there. There's no rain. But now I hope maybe somewhere there is raining somewhere, but it's not coming this way. Now, Juma, for you, are you happy with um, life today? Are things good for you here in Zanzibar? Yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy for life in Zanzibar nowadays. Of you course. hesitate a little bit. Yeah, I told you a little bit. Yeah, sure. That's why I told you now is I'm happy. I'm happy. My job all the time I used to go and see there. Mm -hmm. I don't need to pay anything. That's why. So some of the other countries you have to pay, even if you want to go to fishing there, you need to pay a license and other things there. But here Zanzibar is lucky. They're proud to be in Zanzibar. So yeah. this is my home place. And I know I don't need to pay anything. That's why if I want to go out, find some food for the fish, yes. Now, you, most fishermen don't own the boats that they're out on, correct? You actually pay to be able to use these boats mm, and fish. Mm, mm. Is that right? Yeah, it's all right. It's all right. But uh, this is my brother boat. He's not like a from other people here is doing something. This is my brother, my family boat, that's why. Would you ever move anywhere else? No. Zanzibar is home? Zan no, only Zanzibar. Sometime we have, you know, Tanzania man in there, the rest around there. Yes, maybe. The Zanzibar archipelago sits in warm waters next to the Indian Ocean, so rainfall is common and can happen quickly. It also sits in the intertropical convergence zone. That's where equatorial winds meet. So for people who spend their life in these waters, you need to know what to do when things get wet. What do I need to do? So Pull this in, yeah? We want to check, I mean, we want to job it. Okay. The job in, so we change the other side. All so right. So you come with it. Yes. The white one.
And where does this need to go? That side. Juma, where do you want this to go? Come here, come here with it. With this corner? Yeah, yeah. Woo! Yeah, they're going to pull you out. <sighs> okay. Mm -hmm. So you want to come with it? Got it. And give it. Give it. Here. Yeah. I've got it. Yeah, you got it. Okay, come with it. Okay. Take it from the other side. Yes? So now you get, give it the captain there. Okay. Give the captain this box. Is this the captain? Yeah, the, uh, the vacuum. <laughs> Oof, you can tell these guys are much more skilled at this than I am. <laughs> so somehow the sail got stuck. Juma's climbed his way up to free it. There you go. True Zanzibar fisherman style. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're like a pirate jumping up there. Yeah, on top. Do you need to do anything else? Uh, no, it's okay. And that's a brief and slightly wet glimpse of the life of a fisherman. Juma, thanks very much. Asante. Asante sana. Karib tena. Alright, I'll see you next time. Akuna Matara, thank you. And now we've arrived at Prison Island where a surprise awaits. Come on. I'm walking along a pier on what's called Prison Island. It's just one of the many small islands that make up the Zanzibar archipelago. This is the Zanzibar Channel, and if you look straight across, it's difficult to make out, but you can just barely see, because it's sunset, Stone Town, where this journey began. And the secret could be beneath these waters. Experts believe it's possible there are huge deposits of oil in and around Zanzibar, and if true, it would completely change this part of Africa. For people like Ismail Jusa, it could accelerate the sentiment that Zanzibar should be an independent state once again. For Fatma Baraka's children, grandchildren and great-grandchildren, it might mean they could witness the thriving Zanzibar she remembers as a child. And for fishermen like Juma, maybe just maybe it would mean he wouldn't need to rely on ferrying tourists from island to island. Instead, he could focus on what he calls his family trade, fishing. But whether there's oil here or not, one thing is certain. Zanzibar is an amazing place with wonderful diversity and it has a very interesting future ahead of it. You can see more from this week's journey at cnn.com slash inside Africa. You can also follow me on Twitter under at Errol CNN. <sighs> Just breathing in the atmosphere one last time from the Zanzibar archipelago. I'm Errol Barnett. I'll see you online. Until next time.